أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Inna alhamdulillah Indeed all praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Nahmaduhu Hence we praise Allah Wa nasta'inuhu And the ultimate praise, hamd of Allah Is recognizing that I only ask Allah for help Wa nu'minu bihi and we believe in God but believing in Allah is lip service the next stage after believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is it's placing your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you praise Allah the ultimate praise is realizing no matter what I do in this world I need Allah so Allah I ask for your help there is no step after asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. What is the greatest help Allah can provide you? Allahumma ihdina siratan mustaqeem. Allah gives you the straight path. Once you have believed in Allah and received this straight path, what is the most consistent dua you should make? Oh Allah, please allow me to remember you, be conscious of you, to place my trust in you at every second of the day. وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُودِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيِّئَاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا It's a hefty title. How do you keep Allah in your life for every second? There are two things that are going to affect you from consciously keeping in a relationship with Allah. Number one, وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُودِ أَنفُسِنَا Oh Allah, I ask your protection, your refuge, your sanctuary. I want a force field around the evil that allows me or the evil that creeps up in my nafs. Things that you don't blame shaitan for. Last time we spoke about this, I don't know if it clicked as well. The nafs are things that you don't blame Satan for. Being angry, being lustful, being arrogant. You don't say shaitan did that, right? We are human beings. We see nice cars in the parking lot and we say, oh, I wish I have that. That's human nature. That's not shaitan. We say, Allah, before Juma khutbah begins, allow me to cleanse the nafsi part of myself. And the effect of bad deeds. In our last khutbah, we gave three examples. Today, I will give one. If you come to Salah, Qiyam, you come to prayer, and you feel like you're doing Allah a favor, right? Okay, look, I prayed five times a day. I did it yesterday. Don't expect that from me today. How will you get barakah? How will you get blessing from Salah? Allah will give you some blessing. It's like, okay, this slave, he prayed to me. But if you came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you said, oh my master, oh my owner, I am your subject. 
and you have only asked me to pray to you five times a day. Allah, I am your servant. You could have asked me to pray 50 times a day and it would not be too much to ask from me. Allah, thank you for calling upon me five times a day. Do you see the difference? In one, in one situation, one instance, you're doing Allah a favor. You feel very entitled. You feel very good about what you did. In the second instance, you feel entitled to be the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we change that word servant to subject. Allah doesn't need slaves. Allah doesn't need servants. He needs subjects because He created us and whether you accept Allah or not, He's there. وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِن شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِن سَيِّئَاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا مَن يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَهُ وَمَن يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. So brothers and sisters, ask Allah for guidance. Say, Allah, look, I've been doing this act every Friday. Allah, give me hidayah. I don't want to be a Juma Juma Muslim anymore. I want before Ramadan comes, before the time when people are going to be screaming on this member, the importance of Ramadan and fasting, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And then all of those regular once a year hormones kick in. And like, yeah, I'm going to be religious for this month. Allah, I don't want that. I want to be real. I want to be real to me and I want to be real to you. Whoever Allah guides, nobody misguides. So Allah, Allahumma ihdina sirat al mustaqim. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not guided, I'm asking you to ask yourself this question. Why wouldn't God guide you? What is it that you could have done that will not allow you to get guidance? You fill out your form, right, to get a credit card. And then you fill out these certain portions and then when your credit's not good, they don't give you the card. What could you have done? And they'll give a credit card to a, to a, to a first year college student and we can't get hidayah, what is it that we could have done? The only way we close the doors to guidance is one, you give up on Allah. Never give up on Allah. I hear it from the mouths of the young people. I've sinned so much, I've smoked so much, I've ate so much, I've looked at so much haram, I fought with my wife, I listened to music. Allah couldn't guide me. I had a young man come and tell me, he, I said, come in time for salah. He goes, I've done so much guna, I've done so much sayyiat, even Allah couldn't forgive me. When you close the door on Allah, khalas. Allah will say, your big brain, your frontal lobe, you've decided that I can't, khalas. You choose. You're the human being. I told you, you could come to me with sins from the earth all the way till it scrapes my throne. I want you to think of this as a sin. If you took this single bottle and then lined it up in the whole universe, each, each bottle represents a sin. Allah said if you took this bottle representing a sin and filled all of the universe and the galaxies until the throne of Allah was scraping with your sins and you said, Allah, I'm sorry. Allah would say, what sin? I don't know what you're talking about. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And those of us who will not be guided, it's a choice. Believing in Allah is a choice. Sinning is a choice. And closing the windows to guidance is a choice. Allahumma ihdina sirat al mustaqim. The statement that brings all of us back to a zero level though. Even after, last night you partied and now you can't even see my face clearly because it's fuzzy and you're still, you're still drowsy from yesterday. That statement will bring you and the guy, the brother, the sister who prayed the hajjud the whole night. It will bring all of us to one level if we say one sentence together. I bear witness, testify, I sign on the dotted line of my soul that whether I sinned, whether I prayed Fajr today or not, there is no other God, sustainer, creator. There is no one worthy more of my love and admiration other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do I know that Allah reciprocates that love to me? We bear witness and testify, we kiss his name when we say Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the final messenger and undoubtedly, sometimes young people we have trouble, adults you all know this so I remind myself, on many occasions we stop at Muhammadur Rasulullah, we don't say Abduhu wa Rasuluh. We think, oh Muhammad and the companions, alayhi salatu wasalam, they were super people. 
and they didn't have a job, they didn't get into arguments with their wives, they didn't have their kids all listen to them perfectly, everyone ate their vegetables, it was this perfect world where all they had to do was pray. I ask you to think about Khabbab radiallahu ta'ala an. I ask you to think about the companions. Umar, the giant radiallahu ta'ala an, came to Khabbab once in Medina, so 13 years have passed. He said, Khabbab, tell us about the early days of Islam. Tell, can you tell us? We're in Medina now, we have our own state. Think about it. That's here in Longwood. You've got your own masjid, there's a guy doing traffic for you. And you go to one of the uncles who helped make the masjid and say, Can you tell us of the early days? Tell us about Makkah. Khabbab radiallahu ta'ala an. Remember the word, Khabbab. He removed his overcloak. He didn't say a word. This is when actions speak louder than here on the member. He took off his top cloak. Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, they say he didn't have to use a saddle to get on his horse. He just lifted his leg. This is how massive of a human being he was. He lifted up his shirt, Khabbab and Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, the giant looked at it and said, I've never seen a back like this. They were craters, craters in the back of Khabbab radiallahu ta'ala an, and he said, how did this happen? He said, they would ask me, is there one God? And I would say, yes. And they would drag me across these coals. And the only thing that would quench these coals was the fat from my back. So it left craters. I ask you, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us these examples and we distance ourselves from Sahaba and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, ha ha, they were religious. You're living in a bubble. You're not aware, you're not connected. So here on the member, I say one thing for my young students, for the young brothers and sisters listening to the khutbah. I want you to type the word in Umar series into YouTube. Right? It's 29 parts of the life of Umar radiallahu ta'ala. Did you know that Umar radiallahu ta'ala's wife was upset one time? She didn't sit in the corner and pray two rakah. She came to her husband and said, I'm upset. I'm not happy with what's going on at home. They were real human beings. Ali radiallahu ta'ala got into an argument with his spouse. He came running over to the masjid, slammed his cloak on the ground and said, ah, women, what are we going to do with them? And he went to sleep. He did what a man does best. He got angry and went to sleep. We distance ourselves from sahaba radiallahu ta'ala because they were religious and I have a 401k. Wake up brothers and sisters. Wake up. And I remind you with this small reminder before, as we open the khutbah. I read this narration as a child and I promise you, as a child, I thought it was slightly, it's going to offend you, absurd. I thought it was weird. So the narration reads, when the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala an would see clouds, they would see clouds coming towards Makkah, they would run to the masjid and start praying because they thought the day of judgment was coming. As a child, I was like, really bro? Every time there's Dhanush you come running to the masjid? So I thought to myself, what's the practical application? But they believed, yaqeenan, tuqeenun, that there was a day of judgment. If I believed I had an exam, if I believed I had an LSAT, if I believed I had to take my, my brand new Ferrari for an oil change, you believe me, I would be at that place. I'd be at the examination time. They believed in the hereafter in such a way that when they saw clouds coming, they ran to the masjid. Now you say, oh brother, that's a little extreme. I have a job. So I'm asking you to do one thing before khutbah starts. From Boston down to Maryland, it has been raining torrentially. I drove from California to Dallas a week ago. I saw the aftermath of the tornadoes. And I thought to myself, if this is not a sign what Allah can do to a people. It's, fr it's Friday, right? You read Surah Kahf. Remember the two men who discussed their huge, beautiful gardens? And the man said, my garden will never be touched. We woke, on the way here, we stopped at Dunkin' Donuts. Huge TV screen showed us. Do you saw what happened in Texas this morning? Beautiful 10,000 square foot homes ripped in half. This is, is Allah angry? No. But is Allah trying to wake up the Muslims and the non-Muslims and the human beings who weren't affected? I say we make dua for those people in Texas, in Oklahoma. I say we make dua for those from Toronto I got calls and people said, Brother Sam, this looks like rain out of the Quran, like the people of Noah got. And if you don't remember, there was a 900 mile wide storm. So at some point, look, Sahaba saw a cloud and ran to the masjid. I, I'm comparing something a little bit bigger than a cloud. I'm giving you torrential to, uh, tornadoes and destruction, mass destruction over 2,000 miles wide. 
let's come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked from us, He goes, look, you're human beings, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to watch a Bollywood movie tonight. You're going to go to the theater tomorrow and watch Iron Man 16. You're going to do that. No one's going to stop you. But in between, remember Allah. In between, remember the creator of the heavens and the earth. And at one point, before you turn 70 and go for Hajj, at one point, stop and say, Allah, this dunya is not real. I pay $8.75 to go to a theater so that they can tell me a story about something that's not real. I spend two hours every week doing that. But then I spend 30 minutes watching a sitcom and then I spend 45 minutes listening to music. I'm asking you, what part of our life is actually real? Like real, nature, sky. Which part? And now I feel dumb. Sahaba saw something real. A cloud coming, they came to the masjid. I watched hours of CGI graphics and waiting for Avatar 2 and I'm waiting for this amazing story. It, I watch that, doesn't affect me at all. Just something exciting, I'm waiting for the next one. So what part of our life is real? Only one part, the book that sits on the shelf. Between the sittings of the khutbah, make dua. Ask Allah, Allah, I've been listening to khutbah, I've been Muslim. I ask you to help me rectify the articles of my faith. Allah, if I believe you, then I believe that I will meet you. And I will close this sitting. So between the sittings of the khutbah, do your best to ask Allah for guidance. There is a narration from the Prophet, peace be upon him. Whoever makes dua between the khutbah, this dua is not rejected. Uh, If you want it in simple terms, if you play the lottery right now, you're guaranteed to win. Right? It's it's easier. Like, ah, dua is going to be accepted. Yeah, I don't even know what that means. So if you bought a lottery ticket while I sat down, you're guaranteed to win. Make dua, like, make dua that way. But before I sit, I ask you to ponder one thing. The Quraysh, now this is to my, the community that speaks Arabic. The non-Arab community says, ha ha, it's in Arabic, we never understood it. So just hang on for a second. Quraysh spoke Arabic. Quraysh mastered poetry. Quraysh, the people who lived around the Kaaba, Right? They knew Muhammad for 40 years والسلام, He never told a lie he didn't, His friends invited him to, a, to a, a wedding The bachelor party of a wedding Everyone knows this narration Before he took Nubuwa Three of his friends said Hey Muhammad we're going to the club This club pre-wedding They were dancing and singing and wine He tried He said okay I'll come Someone will watch my sheep What happened to him? Fell asleep Second day what happened? Fell asleep Third day his friends are like Yada, Come on He fell asleep again So they knew him for 40 years. They understood Arabic. They knew the signs of prophethood. They saw him as a human being. Did they believe in Allah? They even told him midway through Makkan period. Okay, khalas, there's an Allah. There's also Allah and Lat and Uzzah and all these other. And Labran and and, and all these other gods. They're there. And maybe you're a prophet. Maybe. Mumkin. There was a Moses. There was a Jesus. Okay, khalas, you're a prophet. We don't care about that. What bothered Quraysh more than anything else? And I tell you, it's what bothers us. It's the part that makes you guilty about your life. It's belief in Akhirah. You could believe in Allah and still do whatever you want, right? Allah is Allah. You could believe the Prophet was a Nabi and say, yeah, well, great, he's a Nabi. What does that have to do with me? But when you accept today, you will watch this, you know, the Jumbotron in, in Dallas Stadium, that huge TV. You will watch today and your entire life on that Jumbotron on the Day of Judgment. All of a sudden, the game changes. All of a sudden, you're not so comfortable. All of a sudden, you want to go and erase your Netflix queue. All of a sudden, you want to erase your history from your internet. And all of a sudden, you're like, what? Is the Day of Judgment? You're going to see everything I just did last night? Ponder on that. When we sit, ask Allah to make your akhira jannah. And if you know this, small dua, read it. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasan wa qina adab al nar.
الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام حينا وأدخلنا دار السلام إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي Indeed definitely Allah himself and the angels that hold up the throne of God Yusalluna are in a perpetual statement of sending peace and blessings on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ورسولنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. Brothers and sisters, time is essentially done. I ask you to ponder one thing. Last Ramadan, someone got up here and said, "Be good in Ramadan because you don't know who's going to be here next year." Y'all are here. Allah chose you to be here. You ain't dead. Hearts might die. But the human body stays together. Are you going to listen to the same dialogue again? Brother, come to the masjid, pray taraweeh. You might be dead next year. Like, yeah, thanks a lot, brother. It's real. I mean, that works, right? You get all pumped up, hormones kick, and you're like, yep, Ramadan. Then Ramadan ends and it's over. I'm asking you to do something for a moment. Ponder why. I used the verb yusalluna, right? Yusalluna means to send peace and blessings on the Prophet, peace be upon him. But I'm going to ask you again. Who sends peace and blessings on the Prophet, peace be upon him? Inna Allah wa malaika. God himself. God himself does an action. We can never be like Allah, of course. But could you do what God does? Sending durood and salams on the Prophet, peace be upon him? Could you have a conversation with Allah? Could you be that person? And you, you say to yourself, okay, Allah, it's intangible, I can't understand. Angels, their only responsibility is follow the law of Allah. And they, all they do is send peace and blessings on the Prophet, peace be upon him. I ask you to do two things. Don't just send durood and salam. Say it with your mouth. Say, Allah, I send peace and blessings on the Prophet, peace be upon him. He's my prophet. He is my nabi. He's the most beloved to me. Oh Allah, bring his life into my life. But how can you bring the life of Rasulullah into your life? It's a quick question. The closest in relationship to the Prophet, peace be upon him, was which wife? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, right? Khatija radiallahu ta'ala anha, she, she demonstrated this. She was a coach. She was the best wife humanly possible. He remembered her for years. But who was the closest to Rasulullah? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. What was Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha's description of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You don't find one narration from the mouth of Aisha that his beard was this big, his eyes were this color, he was this height, nothing. That's his wife. I mean for all people, his wife would be like, yeah, he had a six pack. Some of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described his stomach. They said it was like a folded piece of paper. He had definition in his stomach. That's amazing. But Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha did not describe him physically at all. What did she say about him? He's a walking Qur'an. He's a walking Qur'an. I gave you one example of what God himself does. Sends drood and salams on the Prophet sallallahu I'm asking you, can you imagine if there was a book that had 611 pages of what God did? And what did Allah do? He said those words. Allah said the words in the Qur'an. That's never told to you that way, right? We revealed from the Prophet ﷺ with tajweed, with grammar and bash. Allah said those words. All I ask you to do is say the words Allah said and leave the rest up to Allah. You're going to miss Fajr. You're going to make mistakes. Just get to Allah and Allah will say, what did you do with your life? Nothing Allah. I just read your book. The way you revealed it. Did you follow it in practice? Uh, I tried. 
But let's be real. I'm human. I did the best that you allowed me to do. So what did you do with all of your time? I read Quran. In a time of signs of the day of judgment, in a time where governments are collapsing, in a time where children are glued to a screen. Just one second if you can fathom this for a moment. The Quraysh had idols. Quraysh had idols. They used to go and worship the large idols. I hope you can connect on this. And someone innovated the Qurayshi idols. And they, remember the 57 inch TVs from Mitsubishi? It was amazing if you had that big box in your house. And people would come to your house because you had the biggest idol. Then some Qurayshi innovated. And he made small idols which every single human being could carry in their pocket. And all they would do with their idols is this. They would look at it, they would admire it, and they would get entertained and beloved by it. The Quraysh were astonished by this new and amazing mobile idol. At least one day, one of the Quraysh, he made a date. His date, he made that into an idol. He can't, I'm not joking, he like carved it out. So what did he do in the middle of the desert? It's like, bro, this, 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 this idol looks mighty scrumptious. What did he do to his idol? He ate it. Unfortunately, we can't eat these things. They will last forever. So when we live in a time and an age where governments are collapsing, healthcare is, un, is, is lost, where bombings are happening, you as an individual won't be able to do anything directly, but you will be able to tell Allah, I was never defeated, I never gave up hope, I read Quran. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِيْتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغْ When you make dua, ask Allah knowing that Allah knows how many fans there are in this room. If Allah knows how many fans are moving in this room, Allah knows what's in your heart. اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق Oh Allah, cleanse our hearts from hypocrisy, from being two-faced. وَأَعْمَالَنَا مِنَ الرِّيَا And our actions from showing off. وَأَلْسِنَتَنَا مِنَ الْكَذِبِ And our tongues from telling lies. Allah, don't make us amongst those who lie. وَأَعْيُنَنَا مِنَ الْخِيَانَةِ And our eyes, O oh Allah, the treachery, the filth, and the fahsha that we look at on a daily basis, protect us from that. فَإِنَّكَ تَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنْ وَمَا تُخْفِي الصُّدُورِ Allah, you know what our eyes look at on a daily basis and what is buried deep in our subconscious. اللهم بارك لنا في أسماعنا وأبصارنا وقلوبنا وأزواجنا وذرياتنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم Spend three seconds and just say Astaghfirullah for no one else except your own self and say it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِيْتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغْ Allah set up a scale. On one side of the scale, He said, Be just, spend on your family members, spend a good word, spend a little time with your dad who wants to tell you about a story when he was in high school. Just sit down and listen to the old guy. Just sit there, listen. It's barakah. وَإِحْسَانِ And be aware that Allah sees you. وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغْي Allah has forbidden fahsha between the finals when the women come jumping out with their pom-poms. Change the channel. Have some taqwa of Allah. Change the channel. Don't sit there with your family members like, yeah, that was a great shot and it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not human. Wal-munkar, the line in the sand between halal and haram. Don't take it a little bit and be like, well, I didn't really see it. You know what's haram. Everyone in this room knows to some extent what's haram. Stay away from it. wal oppression. How long will Allah leave this window of guidance open? If you oppress yourself and don't change one thing about yourself, read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَسْنَعُونَ أَقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت